Well, welcome back to another Post Media Senators panel. I'm Bruce Garriock with Ken Warren, and we're pleased to be joined today by, this sounds odd, Wayne Scanlon of Sportsnet.ca, former Ottawa citizen columnist. I still can't get used to that, Wayne. But as we speak this morning, the uh, Senators are coming off a uh, 2-1 victory over the Calgary Flames Monday night at the Canadian Tire Centre. And Philip Gustafson goes in and makes 35 saves in his debut, Wayne. Looked pretty good. He sure did. And uh, like, how unbelievable is this, guys? We just got over the Joey Decord story and his kind of miracle first win and coming in in an emergency start. And we do it again all over again a week later with another, you know, guy that was plugged in to play in the American Hockey League. Just remarkable stuff going on here in Ottawa. You know, I think it's interesting, guys. You see Philip Gustafson in there looking calm as a cucumber. Got a number 30 on his goal mask, wearing number 32. Like, he's not supposed to be there. The backup last night, Anton Forsberg's got the blue pads because at his latest stop, he was playing for the Jets. Nothing is supposed to be what it's supposed to be. And yet, these two guys, you mentioned it, Wayne. Decord comes in, stands on his head to give them a win against the Leafs a week ago, gets injured. He's not supposed to be in that spot. Gustus is not supposed to be in this spot. And so, suddenly... They have some pretty decent goaltending going on, and none of this was none of this was supposed to happen. I, I know there was some thinking that Anton Forsberg may make the start in that game, and my assumption is he'll play either Wednesday night or or Thursday against the Toronto Maple Leafs. He's going to get an, an Ottawa start, but I know the coach G.J. Smith felt that he owed the start to Philip Gustafson. He said, "You can't." He said to me, "I spoke to him the other day." He said, "You can't bring a guy in." off waivers and give him the start ahead of a guy who's been in your organization for four years. It says something about loyalty, doesn't it, guys? Well, also, he came in off the bench, right? He came in cold when Decord got hurt, and, and he played so well. You know, he, he took them right into deep into the shootout before he finally gave up a goal. So I, I think he earned the start, and, and I think DJ Smith felt he had to go back to him, and I'm, I'm really glad that he did because it would have been easier to go with Forsberg. He's He's an older guy, a little more experienced. That would have been the easy move. And I, I, I really, really give DJ Smith a lot of credit for starting Gustafson last night. Well, I think, yeah, it might have been different, guys, if he'd come in in that relief of Decord and maybe not looked as composed as he did, right? He came in and he looked solid. And, you know, it took, like you said, Wayne, it took four shootouts to get a puck, shots to get a puck past him. So he looked good. And, uh, you know, I mean, Forsberg did what he had to do in his tune-up. So, um I, I think they were comfortable going either way, but I, I think Gust Gustafson, you know, he's taken some lumps here along the way. He, he yeah. was really the chosen one uh, after that trade with for Derek Broussard in Pittsburgh, and and he had a rough year last year. He got wins in Belleville, but that was a loaded team. Decord was the better goalie last year, mm -hmm. um, and it take it's taken him a while to get to this level. And I don't know. We were talking just off the air, Wayne and I, about. Maybe there's something about the NHL where everything is more in place of where it's supposed to be rather than the scrambly AHL, which makes it easier for goal. I don't know. Maybe there's something to that. Well, one of the things we haven't seen is very good play when they have played from the injured Matt Murray and the injured Marcus Hogberg. And Hogberg is scheduled to get a, a start in Belleville this week, and uh, so he's closing in on a return. As we sit here, there's no timetable for Matt Murray. One of the things I found interesting about uh, DJ Smith's pregame availability on on Monday, pardon me, Kenny, was that he basically said, somebody take the ball and run with it. He's almost begging someone to take the ball and run with it now. Before well, it was Matt Murray's net. <laughs> well, no, even before, do you remember before Matt Murray got injured, he said the same thing about Decord. Hey, if Decord wants to come in here and, and, and not in those words, and paraphrasing, if Decord wants to come in here and win some games, hey, then that's his. So that that was a cry for, hey, guys, we need some saves here. And now suddenly they're getting saves from Decord and Gustafson, and who knows it when Forsberg gets in there. I, I would assume they go back to Gustafson Wednesday and as a back-to-back, -back, then Forsberg plays Thursday. But, you know, assumptions are silly with their goaltending on right now because you never know what's going to happen next. What do you, what's your thought, uh, Wayne? Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, I, I think, you know what I think players like about these goalies, the way they've come in, Bruce? And what, what Murray was kind of letting them down. This was supposed to be the big guy. He got the contract. He just didn't look 
into it, you know, like at times he seemed to be sitting back in the net. Joey Decord comes in, he's handling the puck, he's shooting it up ice, he's talking, you know, we're there on on nights when when I'm there, you know, there's no fans in the building and you can hear players talk. You can hear Joey Decord talking to his defensemen (laughs) and bumping them up and it's just, they're into the game and I think it gets all the position players into the game and they're, they're happy for these guys. I think they're rallying around these young goalies and Matt Murray, you know, when he gets back, like he's got to pick up his game, like every aspect of his game on and off the ice. Well, and, and, and you look at it, I mean, I mean, Marcus Hogberg has been no, I mean, the, the, oh. the, I think they're ranked 43 and 44 in, uh, in save percentage in the National Hockey League. You know, an area we have to keep an eye on, though, and a guy we have to keep an eye on as the trade deadline approaches is Ryan Dezingle. He scores his fifth goal in nine games with the Senators. I happen to think, as we sit here today, he will not be moved. I don't sense there's a lot of interest in him, and he wasn't very good the last time he got traded at the deadline, Kenny. But he's got to be getting some attention when he's got that many goals in that short a span of time. It's an interesting problem for the Senators to have. And I didn't call it a problem because, sure, you can let him go as a UFA and then you have a question, well, what do you do with him? You got Formanton waiting for a chance to step into essentially that third or fourth line role here. Um, And you've got Dezingle dangling there as maybe it does depend on what the offers are for him. I mean, if it's a fourth or fifth round pick and you got a guy that's scoring goals for you and it's giving you life, then why? Maybe, maybe you don't trade the guy. He's the yeah. hottest scorer on the team since <laughs> he's come in. So, I mean, if, if it's, if the return is nothing, you know, I mean, I'm sure somebody would offer something, but if the return isn't very good, then why bother if, if it's lifting the team now and helping them win some games and give them the confidence? Wayne, I think one of the things we've seen is that if, if absence make the, makes the heart grow fonder, I think we've seen that with with Ryan Dezingle. He's come back. Come to me, he's he's like a new man. He's come back very humble. He's he's happy to be here. I, I think it's been interesting. Yeah. No. It's funny, eh, Bruce, because it, it's like um, the grass isn't always greener on the other side. Like it's you know he went to Columbus and he went to Carolina. He didn't have the success there. So you know, and, and now he's back. This was the team that. That drafted him, and, and they, he talked about being at a development camp when he was a, like a teenager or you know early twenties. Um, young player developed in Ottawa. He became an NHL player here, and I think he's he's finding he'd be happy to stay here. I think, and I, and I think Ken's right. I think it's it's going to come down to offers. If 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 you know somebody, especially a Canadian team that maybe he where he wouldn't have to yeah. quarantine yeah. long. If they can, if they offer up a first or a second, you know, I think I don't think Ottawa can turn that down. But if it's a lower rank pick, you know, why would you bother? Maybe just hang on to him, let him finish out the season here, finish strong, and maybe there's a chance he signs to a short-term deal. You know, one of the areas that Kenny wanted to discuss was the defense. And um, it, it's interesting that uh, Eric Branch from Kenny is down in Belleville right now. Eric and Branch is, is a healthy scratch for the first time this season. They've got uh, nine defensemen, really, if you include Branstrom. Uh, they've got eight on their roster. Braden Coburn could be moved to the deadline, maybe. They've got some interesting decisions to make on defense, and, and Branstrom being in Belleville is actually not a bad thing, is it? I think it is. I think it's a very good thing. They tried him, and, and I, I don't have any issues whatsoever with you give a guy a chance to play, uh, and, and there are certain situations he's not ready for in the NHL. So go down in the AHL and work on those situations. He is a dominant defenseman in the AHL. And, but there are situations you can work on that, uh, you know, we just talked about the difference between the AHL and, AHL and NHL. Work on certain situations, get better in those situations, and he'll be back up here. I, I just, it, it's it's become intriguing of late how little, I don't know if it's a trust situation or if it's just going with the horses that are carrying you. That third pairing, uh, late in games, DJ Smith is not playing his third pairing. And last night it was Josh Brown, Christian Willanen. Um, and he's putting the load on on Shabbat and Zaitsev, to, and 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 a surprising, I guess, pairing at the start of the year would be Riley and Zub. Those guys are getting the minutes right now. I, I think it's interesting how that's developed. Yeah, and, and Wayne, I mean, uh, an area we have to keep an eye on here is um, 
Austin Watson hurt his hand at the end of the game last night, blocking a shot, dropped his stick, went straight to the bench. Ryan Dezingle suggested at the uh, uh, end of the game that there was some concern there. Austin Watson's been a good addition for this team. Was he ever? He's going to be donating his body to science when this season is over. <laughs> the body parts that he's damaged. I mean, he's throwing his face and entire body in front of shots. He had that scary one where the puck went off the collarbone and, and you know, kind of scorched his neck going across the throat. I mean, he is all in. And, I, you know, I was one of those guys that wasn't too sure about him. Like, yeah. you know, what's Austin, Austin Watson going to do? He kind of hits people, hits them kind of late. You know, as DJ Smith said last night, his skating has really improved. Um, Ryan Dezingle was talking about, you know, playing with him on a fourth line and how happy he is to have him on his line. You know, like he is he's all in. I think he's really been a, a leadership guy for the for the young players and showing them what it takes to play in this league and a good penalty killer. So a really good solid pickup for the senators. If you, think, if you think of all the off-season signings, uh, and and some of them under the radar, some are above the radar in the trades, you know, Austin Watson has, has had as much impact as any one of those guys. You know, uh, the high-profile guys, and here's a guy that kind of slid on. Oh yeah, fourth liner, like you said, Wayne. What's he gonna do? Uh, seven hits and five blocks, I think, last night, or vice versa. Something like that. very impressive. Well, if he's lost for any length of time, that'll be a huge loss for this team with only about, I guess, five, six weeks left in the season. That's this week's Post Media Senators panel for Post Media in Ottawa. I'm Bruce Garriock with, with Ken Warren, and we appreciate uh, Wayne Scanlon of Sportsnet.ca for joining us. The light is shining brightly on Ken. He's sitting in the sun today. Take care. Have a good one. <laughs>